Hey folks, John Schneider here uh, once again to talk about the Alec Baldwin Rust uh, tragedy. I want to read a couple of things for you right off the internet, right behind you. Alec Baldwin calls for police officers on film sets after fatal Rust shooting. Alec Baldwin urges Hollywood to employ police officers on sets using real or fake guns. Rust shooting. Alec Baldwin wants police officers on sets. This is starting to sound like Alec Baldwin is a victim to me. So we are witnessing this horrific twist that is being put on probably the most avoidable and senseless killing ever on a film set. Okay? Let's not forget that Mr. Baldwin is not only the producer, so now he's employing, he's a, he's a pardon me, he's calling for producers just like him to do something he didn't do. He's calling for Hollywood to employ police officers on sets. What's not being said there is so that we can avoid horrible tragedies like this, horrible accidents like this in the future. Well, Mr. Baldwin produced this film. Mr. Baldwin wrote with the director the screenplay for this film. So I write and direct the films that we do here, and I'm in, in many of them. And when you write a film, when you are writing a screenplay, you have a picture in your head. So you know what you want the shot to look like. So you write that into the screenplay. So you can't claim if you are the writer, producer, star, of a film, you cannot claim ignorance. You just can't. Unless the media lets you. Alec Baldwin urging Hollywood to employ police officers using real or fake guns, or Alec Baldwin becoming the poster child for uh, gun safety on the sets, to be the person who's speaking out about gun safety is like having someone who just ran over a child in a school zone because they were reckless, because they were careless, because they did not care about the speed limit, because they no took no precautions whatsoever to keep the kids in the, safe, in the, uh, in the crosswalk safe. It's like making that person all of a sudden, the go-to person for driving safety in school zones. Alec Baldwin and several other people, but the last person in the chain of events to completely ignore protocol, to completely and recklessly do something that should not ever be done on the set, and Mr. Baldwin, you know better. You've been on many sets. You've delivered speeches, dialogue that someone else wrote about gun safety. I believe that was in the hunt for Red October. Folks, don't buy into it. Um, if the wonderful, wonderful folks in Santa Fe, the uh, police officers and detectives who are looking into this are seeing this, if there's any, uh, any possibility that you're seeing this, I implore you, interview someone who knows exactly what protocol should be on the set. Not someone who was part of this movie who may be trying to cover up. Uh, um, I, can't, I just cannot call it an accident. I can't do it. 
uh, failed, intentionally failed, ignored protocol. Don't talk to someone who was there, other than just to get an idea of what happened when they were there. But please talk to someone who knows what protocol is, who is unbiased with regard to that particular production. Okay, uh, folks, I'm going to show you I have here. There's another thing. They've been saying prop gun, prop gun, prop gun. I explained that to you that when a prop master hands an actor a gun or a cup of coffee or a cell phone, it's considered a prop. Well, this actually is a prop gun. Uh, hopefully they won't turn me off for this, but I want to show you the difference. Because a lot of people are very interested in this because the media has been calling it a prop gun. Even when handed a prop gun, you see where my fingers are? They're nowhere near the trigger. So. With a prop gun, you check to see, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but can you see that it's bigger here than it is here? That's so that a bullet can't fit in there, okay? That's so there's no way in the world an actual bullet with lead, because it's a certain size from here to here, the lead would get in the way and it would keep you from being able to push the, uh, the bullet in. That would be a prop gun. That's what you should fire uh, blanks out of, although it doesn't look right on camera, okay? Uh, now, you'll notice in here, perhaps, yeah, see right there? This is also plugged. The gun is plugged, so there is nothing, there's no way that if you, if you shoved dirt in there or put a projectile in here, uh, there is nothing that will push it out because this, in fact, is a prop gun. So if someone hands you that on the set, they say it's a prop gun, you for, they, they will show you this. I feel bad just pointing at my shoulder. They will show you this. See? They will show you that it's empty. They will then put their finger here, shine a light down the barrel so that if it is a non-plugged prop gun, you can still see that there's nothing in there. But in this case, they would shine a light down the barrel to show you that there is in fact darkness down there. You cannot, this is solid right here, okay? Then they would take it and they would fire it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, times just in case then they will hand it to you and then what will you do you will open it you will check it you will look in it you will close it and you then will shoot it sometimes six sometimes seven uh it's better this is a a uh, a rule always it is better to err on the side of caution so now you have this gun in your hand. You still don't put your finger on the trigger. You put it in your holster, you're playing a cop, whatever it is, you're a cowboy, you put it in your holster. And if any, if you ever take that gun for any reason and put it down, guess what you do? You pick it up, you open it, you check, you look down, you close it, then you put it back in your holster. That is what everyone is required to do. Okay? There is no world, and they want you to think that there is, but there is no world in which someone hands you a gun on the set, says, cold weapon, and you put it in your holster and you go shoot a scene or do a rehearsal, okay? There is no world in which, in which that is okay. It does not happen. <sighs> okay, then I hand it off to you. What do you do? I know this is redundant, but this is drilled, drilled into the 
heart and soul and fingers and minds of every, here, see, of every single person, well, I didn't do the other part, of every single person who is ever, yeah, see, this one I can see down the barrel, who is ever handed a weapon on set. Okay? And the other, the other thing is, watch this, this is, this is just kind of, kind of fun. For those of you who are part of YouTube for the powers that be, this is what I'm going to do. Are you ready? Okay, and by the way, the gun in the movie was a single action. So that means you had to pull back and then fire. Pull back, fire. Okay, now why in the world they were using blanks on the set to begin with, I don't know, except in this day and age except that sometimes uh, people, really honestly, I think, who don't know any better, uh, want to, uh, they want to see the fire and the, and the uh, they, they feel there's something better about using blanks. There really is not much of a recoil unless you use a full load. Uh, a full load, uh, uh, there's full loads, quarter load, or full loads, half loads, and quarter loads. Okay, and all that mean, it means is that in the blank that you put in here, remember a blank is a shell, I don't have any, is a, a shell uh, that you do fire. It does have an explosion and it has a little piece of cardboard uh, or paper wadding uh, that replaces the lead from a bullet and that goes in there. So you have the whole bullet blank inside there, right? And usually when you do a movie, they will, they will give you one. They'll find out how many they're supposed to shoot. If you're supposed to shoot two, they'll give you two. They, there will never be extra in there for safety's sake, ever. And I've been doing this. Remember, I've been doing this since 1978. Okay. Actually, I did a Marine film in 1975. And we had guns and there were no bullets anywhere around. That was 1975. So... Um, if you had a blank in there and you pull the trigger, boom, there'd be some fire coming out and some paper wadding. And that's why I'm sure you've heard in the news that there was no plexiglass up on the set. Uh, what they will do in order to protect the camera operator and anyone who's standing right behind the camera, especially if you're pointing, see where I'm pointing? Like right by the lens. They'll have a piece of plexiglass there to keep the wadding from hurting somebody. But you would never be this close. You would still be a ways away. Okay, so in this day and age, if I do this and I pull the trigger, nothing happens. Okay, but if I do this and I act like something happened and I go to my computer afterwards and I put in a muzzle flash and I put in a sound, it'll look very real. Ready? Watch this. Ah, yeah, there was no sound in here whatsoever. All I did was this. Watch this. Ah, yeah. Why did they do it? I don't know. But what is infuriating me right now, I'll read them again. Alec Baldwin calls for police officers on film set after sets after fatal rust shooting. What that does not imply in that headline is that it was Alec Baldwin himself who killed someone on the set. Not because guns are dangerous. Not because guns are bad. But because Mr. Baldwin chose to ignore protocol totally you do that because you're in a rush you do that because you're distracted you do that for because you're a prick you do that for any number of reasons but it is inexcusable 
inexcusable. So, lastly, if you have a modicum of self-respect, Mr. Baldwin, don't go online and talk like you're some sort of a set gun expert firearms expert and you're going to Im implore that people use better. It is not about better protocol. It's about following the protocol that's already in place and you ignored it. Turn yourself in. Ask that you be incarcerated until this is straightened out because you are currently a terrible, terrible mark on our collective wonderful industry that already has enough safety protocols, but they have to not be ignored like you chose to do. All right, folks, you take care. Yes, I'm still on this. I can't help it. I don't want to see this go the way of poor Alec Baldwin. That is a disgrace to the family. I don't care how good of friends they are or were. That is a disgrace to the family. You take care. Bye.